Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and I'm now answering question number three from the International A Level Edexcel January 2022 Pure Mathematics P4 exam. And this question here is about parametric equations. So, part A of this question is telling us to uh, change this parametric equation, which is an equation which is expressed in terms of a third parameter, not just x and y, but also here t. And we have to change this equation uh, or change the form of it into a Cartesian equation, which is when you have y in terms of x, just in terms of y and x, no, no third parameter. So we have to rewrite this in this form. And um, with Cartesian equations being formed from parametric equations, which have um, trig functions in them, then one of the um, methods that we should use is to use identities. So I see that x is equal to 3 plus 2 sine t, right, and y is equal to 6 over 7 plus cosine 2t. Now, if I can make the sine t the subject of this equation here, so I have x minus 3 divided by 2. So I can say x, oops, one second. So x minus 3 divided by 2 is equal to t, uh, sine t, sorry is equal to the sine of t, just rearranging that equation. Um, and if I can try to express this cosine 2t and rewrite it so it's in terms of sine t, then I can replace the sine t in that with x minus 3 over 2. That's how you're supposed to deal with this by substitution. So I've got to find a way of taking cosine 2t and rewriting it in terms of sine t okay now we know the double angle formula we should know the double angle formula one of the double angle formula is cosine of 2 theta is equal to um, 1 minus 2 sine squared theta so i can rewrite this as 1 minus 2 sine squared t now this is something that we should know it's not something that will be given to you where does this come from well in case you forget it, you could go to the double angle formulae which are in the formula book. Okay, there's um, the addition formula, not the double angle formula, the addition formula. And you'll see a formula that says something like this. Cosine A plus or minus B is equal to, um, it'll say cosine A cosine B minus plus sine A sine B. That's how you expand this double angle. All right, so this is something which is given in the formula book. And if you think about it, this is like a double angle. So this is, be, say, for example, cosine 2a would be like cosine of a plus a. That's cosine 2a. So if we follow this, it'll be cosine a times cosine a, which is cosine squared a, minus sine a times sine a, which is sine squared a. And you end up with this. And if I want to express this in terms of just sine squared a, I can rewrite cosine squared a as 1 minus sine squared a. That's the cosine squared a. And I've got another sine squared a. So this is going to be 1 minus 2 sine squared a. So cosine 2a, cosine 2a, which is this, is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared a. So that means cosine 2t can be expressed as 1 minus 2 sine squared t. So I can take the y equals, and I have 6 over, 7 plus, and instead of cosine 2t, I can write 1 minus 2 sine squared t. Okay, so that's, um, you know, sorted that out in terms of being able to deal with this. And remember, sine squared t is the same as sine t all squared. So basically now I can replace this sine squared t with x minus 3 over 2 all squared. So I can say y is equal to 6 over 7 plus 1 minus 2 times. Then I'm going to have all of this x minus 3 over 2 squared. Okay, so I need to simplify this now. So this is going to give me 6 over, this is 7 plus 1 is 8, minus 2 times x minus 3 squared over 4, that cancels with that, that's going to give me a 2 there. 
I can multiply now both the numerator and the denominator by 2 to get rid of this 2 in the denominator. So this is going to give me y equals 6 times 2, which is 12, over, if I multiply all of this by 2, I'll have 2 times 8, which is 16, minus, and the 2 will cancel with this one I multiply, it will be x minus 3 squared. And now we can proceed to simplify this. You have 12 divided by 16 minus, let me expand this first, I'm keeping the bracket there, that'll be x squared minus 6x and plus 9. And when I simplify that, I have y equals 12 over, that's going to be minus x squared, well, we'll say 16, 16 minus 9, which is 7, and plus 6x and minus x squared. And we can factorize this. We don't actually need to show the factorizing because they've told you what it looks like, but just... I like to factorize, so we got here 7 plus 6x minus x squared, so I'm going to put my 7 here, this is my window method which I like to use. I'll put these two terms in these boxes, if it's a negative x squared I'll write that over here. These two multiply to give you negative 7x squared, two numbers here multiply to give you negative 7x squared and add to give you plus 6, well that must be plus 7x and minus x. All right, so I can take out the common factor from these two, which is 7. 7 times something is 7, that's 1. 7 times something is 7x, well, that's x. And then 1 times something gives you minus x, well, that must be minus x. So I'm left with 7 minus x and 1 plus x. So y is equal to 12 over 7 minus x times 1 plus x. And that's the answer, I think. 7 minus x times 1 plus x, that's right. Right now, a lot of people, they lose marks in this question. And I marked the paper for my students. There was a lot of people that left out this part. You have to find what p and q are for these limits. Okay, so here we have t's between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. And we got to write in terms of x, x is between what two limits. And it says where p and q are constants to be found. So... A lot of people look at these things on the sides and they think they're just there for decoration. But actually, you should take note of them. So in this case here, we need this to find what um, x is in terms of p and q. So basically, it's telling us when t is equal to minus pi over 2, you've got to find what x is. Now, when x is equal to 3 plus 2 times sine of minus pi over 2. Okay, which is 3. Now, the sine of negative pi over 2 is going to be minus 1. So that's 2 times minus 1, which is minus 2. 3 times minus 2, which is 1. Okay, so we know that p is equal to 1. Okay, so p is equal to 1. And when t is equal to pi over 2, we have x is equal to 3 plus 2 times sine of pi over 2. Now, the sine of pi over 2 is 1, so this is going to be 3 plus 2, which is 5. So we can say that q is equal to 5. So we can write the x between 1 and 5 now. So we can say that x is between 1 and 5. Okay, so that's something we have to write down. All right, yeah, less than or equal to 5 and greater than or equal to 1. Okay, so there's the answer to part A of this question. Now, part B is uh, from a topic... Uh, partial fractions. So I'm going to save that in a separate video just so I can um, categorize the question in terms of topics as well as paper. So you'll find um, other questions from this particular paper in the playlist over here, including part B. You'll find other questions from the topic of parametric equations in this playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. And I'll probably put another link, especially for part B of this question, also somewhere at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and see you soon.